What happens if you watch a movie on a VR headset while speeding down the highway? Nothing bad, if you leave the driving to artificial intelligence. But are we ready to do that? Is it really safe? Autonomous driving, our topic on today's shift. Whenever I look at the car industry's prototypes, I always get the urge to jump right into this brave new world of innovation. The latest developments were unveiled at the recent Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, in Las Vegas. My personal favorite is a VR headset that lets you play games in the car. Audi and Disney are collaborating on Marvel Heroes. When the car speeds up, the spaceship in the game does too. The virtual content takes cues from the car's movements. For now, it's only meant for passengers. But in an autonomous car, avid gamers could try it in the driving seat. What else did the CES have to offer? This is how Mercedes envisions the future of autonomous driving. The passengers sit together with nobody at the wheel. Different models could be used to carry cargo, for instance. Nissan has unveiled technology for self-driving cars that can see around corners. It uses a VR headset, sensor data, cameras and the Nissan Cloud. The system can point out free parking spots and even interesting sights along the way. German automotive supplier ZF presented a robo-taxi at the CES. The passenger can order a cab per app, set off without the chauffeur and pick up more passengers en route. Kia's latest feature is facial recognition. The atmosphere inside is adjusted to suit the passenger's mood. Artificial intelligence reads emotions from their expressions. It's only a step away from adapting the driving style to suit their mood as well. It's going to take a little while before this technology becomes widely available. We're still a long way from the self-driving car that lets us simply laze around on the back seat. So far, only prototypes have been built. But do you want to sound like you're on top of developments? Here's a quick review of autonomous driving in six steps. Level zero, no automation. The driver does everything him or herself. Level one. Driver assistance systems like cruise control, anti-lock brakes, and a lane-keeping assistant help the driver. Level two, partial automation. The car corrects for lane drifting and keeps a safe distance from other cars using brake assists or collision warnings. Level three, conditional automation. The driver can let go of the steering wheel for a time and doesn't have to monitor the systems constantly. But in certain situations, he or she has to take control if the onboard computer requires it. Level four, high automation. The vehicle operates all systems automatically, but the driver can take over if desired. Level five, full automation. The car only needs to be started and have the destination entered. Human control of the steering and acceleration are no longer needed. By the way, cars from level one and two are already available. They help drivers keep within their lanes or hit the brakes if necessary. Autonomous driving isn't available everywhere. It needs fast, reliable data networks. Car makers rely on systems like the new 5G cellular mobile standard or dependable Wi-Fi. This is because the sensors in autonomous cars have to process huge quantities of data, up to 19 terabytes an hour. That translates into 19,000 gigabytes my phone's flat rate wouldn't get me around the next corner. So far, self-driving cars are mostly restricted to test tracks. But in Chandler, Arizona, things are different. In Chandler, Arizona, USA, the future of driving has become reality. A selected number of the town's residents can use self-driving taxis to get around town. A safety driver only intervenes in emergencies. Alex Hoffman remembers his first taxi ride. Get in, sit down, and, and watch the steering wheel turn on its own. And, and you know, it's a big grin on my face the entire time. Look at the safety driver, realize they're 
they're not driving the car, the car is driving, and that's just the coolest thing in the world. I had a big, goofy grin my first whole ride. Waymo has now signed up a few hundred customers for the experiment. The taxis booked by app, just as with Uber or Lyft. And the fares are similar. But not everyone is happy with the idea of self-driving cars on Chandler streets. Many people are in, they are totally against self-driving vehicles because what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have a lot of individuals who aren't gonna know how to physically drive the vehicle. Right now, knowing how to operate the car is the job of the safety driver. But in future, the car will be taking on all the functions itself. It'll take a few years before cars hit the road without drivers. Not only technology needs further development, but also the laws need to be changed. Many legal issues are still open. Who's liable if a parking assistance system causes a fender bender? The vehicle's maker or its owner? And whose fault is it if a self-driving car injures somebody? Is the driver always liable? Or can a machine take the blame? In many countries, the driver is responsible. This ruling is based on the Vienna Convention on Road Traffic, signed by over 70 countries. It allows the transfer of driving tasks to the vehicle, provided that the technologies can be overridden or switched off by the driver. So it seems self-driving cars are still not permitted. The legal situation may be complex, but so is the technology. We spoke to an expert on automated driving. He works for one of Germany's leading research institutes for road vehicles. Adrian Slocki studied automotive technology. He's been working on autonomous driving for years, even trying it out on the institute's test track. We asked him to explain in more detail how self-driving cars work. The auto industry is working on prototypes that are able to recognize their surroundings. The technology includes cameras, radar, lidar, and ultrasound sensors. They tell the car where it is and who or what is in the vicinity. A radar system is installed behind this logo so it's not visible. But the radar sensor can see through the logo. Down here we see a laser-based scanner, a LIDAR sensor. It registers the surroundings with a 180-degree scan in front of the vehicle. Another radar sensor is installed next to it that monitors the area up to 200 meters away. Hidden away here on the side is a dual camera system. It's able to detect the road markings, pedestrians and other vehicles on the road. But many of these sensors have their weak points. They only work optimally in good weather conditions. Cameras and leader sensors are optical systems. In heavy rain, the big drops of water can be reflected by them. Like human eyes, they can be compromised in fog. That's why we need this mix of sensors, cameras, radar and leader. The cars are also equipped with extremely precise digital maps. The navigational data, road markings and stoplights, as well as the houses and trees are recorded on different levels. Keeping these maps up to date and accurate is crucial. Current user-generated content is also used to create the best possible digital maps. Well, let's hope the onboard computer doesn't crash. But guess what our expert says is the biggest challenge in road traffic? I would say the human being is the most complicated element in traffic. People don't always act logically and consistently in given circumstances. Studies have shown that both pedestrians and drivers in different countries react very differently. And not everyone observes the rules of the road. In an effort to gauge these unpredictable reactions better, the researchers feed different kinds of human behavior into their algorithms. 
We have very different patterns of behavior. One might be very conservative, another might be very athletic or very aggressive. These patterns can be recognized, and you can use the algorithms of artificial intelligence to store them as models, so the vehicle can recognize quite accurately if the driver ahead is a conservative or aggressive driver and adapt accordingly. Drivers have always been accustomed to having control over the car. Giving up that control can seem very strange and cause uncertainty. So researchers analyze human responses in test vehicles or on simulators. Interaction between man and machine requires, above all, trust. The driver has to be able to trust the system, and he can only trust it if he's informed by the system. So the display and operating concept plays an essential role. In other words, how the machine shows the human its next steps. The car has to communicate with me, and I've got to listen. People's readiness to surrender control varies from country to country. Indian, Malaysian and Chinese drivers are the most willing. Oddly enough, drivers in the big car-making nations would rather drive themselves, with Germany at the top of the list. 31% of those surveyed here say they would never willingly step into a self-driving car. Skeptics are concerned about accidents caused by technical glitches, losing control over their vehicles or hackers interfering. Worries like this are not to be taken lightly. Autonomous vehicles need software updates and must communicate with their surroundings. That opens the door to potential hackers. And fatal accidents involving self-driving cars have already dampened the euphoria somewhat. Are we ready for driving in the future? People in Chandler, where Waymo is testing the self-driving taxis, have already attacked such vehicles several times with rocks and even knives. People don't want to be guinea pigs in road traffic. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to being chauffeured around and relaxing in an autonomous car? Or do you have your doubts? If yes, why? Let us know. Join the discussion on Facebook or at DW.com. That was it for this edition of SHIFT. Until next time. Bye.